Greetings everyone, and welcome to ASMR Gaming News. Please hit that like button, sit back, relax, and let's begin. So, we got a lot of news this week from TGS, the Tokyo Game Show 2019. So, uh, first off, <laughs> we have some pretty bizarre news uh, for Nintendo. So something really unique got announced for the Nintendo Switch. It was finally revealed. Uh, it's kind of like the Kinect, kind of like Wii Fit, if any of you had Wii Fit on the Nintendo Wii. But there is this new uh, workout exercise game for the Nintendo Switch that is going to be using a Ring Fit peripheral device. And this accessory is basically a ring that you can do exercises with. And you put one Joy-Con on your leg with like a strap, and the other you put in this ring. And basically in this game, it's like an adventure game. You go on an adventure. If you jog in place, like if you're standing in front of your TV and you jog, your, your character in the game will run kind of like Temple Run. If any of you have an iPad or iPhone, chances are you played Temple Run. Temple Run was a very popular game. It's still very popular right now. Uh, people are still playing it, but kind of reminds me of Temple Run. Like you're running and the character on the screen is running and you will get into battles every once in a while. And in order to fight these enemies, you have to do squats or other exercises to damage these enemies and then you can keep on running to your destination and then there's going to be boss fights there's like a story mode there's special challenges you can do like you have to do like 20 push-ups or 20 sit-ups or squats and various other exercises to level up and get stronger and defeat more enemies and unlock better things and apparently like the main villain is this like evil dark dragon that's kind of destroying the land and you have to go face him at the end of the game so at first i was like this nintendo game is dumb like who in the world wants to play a video game that's like exercise but after i saw this i was like that looks really cool and interesting like i do not care about the workout you know i'll go outside running if i need to get a workout or you know, head to the gym or something, like, I don't really need to play a video game for that, but the fact that it's a fun video game, that kind of caught my attention, so, I don't know, I feel like this, this could actually be awesome, and it's coming out very, very soon, it's coming out in October, and I think I might pick this game up, so let me know if you guys want to see me play it here on the channel, might play it, might do a video or something on it, but it is really cool. Uh, Next, we have some more Nintendo news, and this is awesome news. So, a while ago, Nintendo announced that they were doing this Nintendo theme park in Japan, and then they were going to bring it to Universal Studios here in the United States and in other countries around the world. So, apparently, the Japanese Super Nintendo World theme park is going to open in 2020, right in like the spring, end of spring, just in time for the 2020 Olympics. So what Nintendo is planning on doing is finishing right before the Olympics. So when all the people come in to watch the Olympics, they'll maybe stop by the Super Nintendo World theme park and, you know, go on the rides and stuff. So uh, right now they said that when it launches, there are only going to be two rides. One of them is like some Super Mario Kart ride, and another one is like some kind of maze. Not exactly sure, but I really want to check those out if I ever go to Japan. Um, and what makes this theme park special is that you're going to be able to use a wrist band that you, you know, basically wear on your wrist. And it, it has like Nintendo, you know, symbols and stuff like that. And throughout the theme park, you're going to like, gain experience or level up, like unlock collectibles and things, and then when you get home, you're going to be able to scan that wristband on your Nintendo Switch and in some way kind of like increase your progression in the theme park. They didn't really explain all that much about that, but 
that sounds awesome. Like, imagine going to the theme park, leveling up some stuff, getting home then on your Nintendo Switch. You have a lot of cool new things unlocked that you can do in some games, so can't wait to hear more about that in the future. Next, we got some Fortnite news. So I'm sure all of you are aware of Hypex. Uh, hope I'm saying that correctly. He's a YouTuber here on YouTube, probably one of the biggest ones when it comes to Fortnite leaks. Uh, whenever there's a Fortnite leaked, leaked skin or something, he's like the first one to talk about it. And I'll do like a video and show it off. Uh, very big channel, great guy. I've watched lots of his videos to learn about leaks. So earlier this week, he mentioned that he found a secret file in the new Fortnite update that mentions Squid Kid. And he immediately thought that this meant Splatoon and Fortnite are going to have a crossover. And that kind of makes a lot of sense, you know. Splatoon is a shooter, third-person shooter, very popular among, you know, children, teenagers, that kind of audience there, and Nintendo fans, and Fortnite is popular among these same audiences, and it, it is also a third-person shooter, so there might be some kind of a cross-promotion going on, who knows, maybe the Nintendo Switch version is going to get a special exclusive skin. Uh, because if you guys remember, like, the PS4, it has a bunch of exclusive PlayStation skins. And the Xbox, the Xbox One has a, well, I don't want to say a bunch, but I know they have at least, like, two skins. So, I think that Nintendo Switch is going to get, like, a really cool exclusive Fortnite skin that's very different than any other exclusive skin, and it's going to be a Splatoon skin. And maybe it's going to be bundled with the Nintendo Switch for Christmas or something like that. But I'm sure it's going to be very, very popular. So none of this has been confirmed yet. But according to Ipex, he did find a file with the word Squid Kid in the Fortnite, like updated uh, files and codes and whatever he goes into to kind of like detect what changes were made and what skins he can show up in his videos, so that's interesting, and I really hope that is true, because if, if so, that's going to be awesome. I mean, imagine a Splatoon and Fortnite crossover, like a special mode. Oh, I can already imagine, like, a limited time mode for Splatoon. You play as, like, a squid or a uh, Fortnite skin, but, like, kind of like in Splatoon style. Maybe a whole area of the map is based on Splatoon, kind of like what they did for Borderlands 3. They changed the art style and made it more cell shaded They can make it more cartoony to suit Splatoon or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out there, but it does sound really, really awesome. So I hope, I really hope that they actually do that. Next, uh, there's some news for all you Resident Evil fans out there. So for a while now, there's been rumors and leaks about this upcoming Resident Evil spin-off game that everyone thought was going to be Outbreak. Well, it was revealed this week. There's gameplay, there's full-on trailers, lots of screenshots, and it's not really Resident Evil Outbreak. It's more of like a multiplayer, uh, kind of like crazy Resident Evil style game. There's a trailer out right now. The game is called Project Resistance. It's set in the Resident Evil universe. You play as different characters. And I've seen a lot of comparisons to a lot of other games. I heard some people saying it's kind of like Left 4 Dead, but way different. Uh, I heard some people, you know, mentioning that it's like the Umbrella Core games that were not well received. Uh, Operation Raccoon City on like the PS3. Kind of like shooters that were set in the Resident Evil series or universe. So some fans are not exactly excited about this reveal, but you know, some people are uh, hoping that, you know, it actually ends up being a good game. And judging by the trailers, you know, they did put a lot of work into some stuff. You can tell that it's a quality game. Uh, I just haven't had, you know, the time to actually play it yet. So I don't know. It, it, it's coming out next year, so it's not even coming out this year. And yeah, it's a Resident Evil spin-off game called 
Project Resistance, and it looks okay. You know, it's not the next Resident Evil game. It's not Resident Evil 8 or anything like that, but it does look like it could be fun, you know, to play with friends or something. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot got a release date, so this game is coming out in January 2020. So, yeah, if you love Dragon Ball Z, if you like Goku, this game is going to be all about Goku. He's the main character of this game, and it's kind of like an action-adventure RPG. Uh, you can level up, you go around the map, uh, you can explore, you can do, like, quests or miss missions, you can continue with the story from Dragon Ball Z. And apparently, it, it's going to be, like, an entire, like, story saga that you can, ex like, experience. So, th the fights look awesome. There's a new trailer that came out. So, yeah, Dragon Ball fans really excited about this one. The graphics look great. There's, like, all sorts of, like, special pre-order editions, like, limited editions, special editions, collectors with, like, uh, Goku figure and stuff included. So, all of those look awesome. <laughs> so, definitely check those out if you, if you think uh, this game is going to be good. Uh, it's coming out in January. So, you know, just a few more months early, 2020. And next, one of my favorite games, Final Fantasy VII, uh, had a brand new trailer for the remake that just came out this week for the TGS, uh, you know, trailer reveal thing that they do where basically Tokyo Game Show is like E3 where they reveal and show off a lot of new games and stuff like that. So they released a new one for Final Fantasy VII, showed off a ton of new things, new characters that we haven't seen yet, like Reno and Rude and Seng. From the original Final Fantasy VII game, we get to see how they look like in the updated, you know, graphics for this new version, and it, they look amazing. Like, can't wait to play this game. Uh, we even get to see Don Corneo, who looks really, really creepy, so I think they did him justice, just like in the original game, so lots of really nice nods and winks to fans with this new trailer. There's also a mini game where you can do squats, so they're bringing back like all the mini games and things from the original Final Fantasy VII into this remake, so this trailer made me very, very happy. So if you're a Final Fantasy fan, I highly recommend checking it out too. Um, next, Kingdom Hearts 3 also got a trailer for the upcoming DLC called Remind. And this DLC for Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be bringing back a lot of, like, extra bonus features into the game. Uh, we're going to be able to fight new bosses, there's going to be new Keyblades, new Dark Forms, stuff like that. So, if you already beat Kingdom Hearts 3 like I have, uh, you know, there's not a lot of, like, extra content to do once you beat the game. So this is going to be adding data battles from, like, Kingdom Hearts 2 into Kingdom Hearts 3, so we're going to be able to fight, uh the organization members, and a lot of other bosses and stuff, so this is going to be awesome. Can't wait for this DLC to come out for Kingdom Hearts 3, so check out the trailer for that. Um, next, we got a very highly anticipated trailer for Death Stranding at TGS. It's like a gameplay trailer that shows off a lot of the story and gameplay content for Death Stranding. And warning, Hideo Kojima, before this trailer came out, told all of his fans to not watch the trailer because the trailer was made for people that were not sure if they wanted to buy this game. And he says, if you're a fan and you already are buying this game, do not watch this trailer because it will spoil some things that I want to be a surprise for first-time players. So I have not watched the trailer yet, but I have heard from, you know, fans that it was actually a really cool trailer, pretty bizarre in some parts, like they're still kind of confused about some things, but yeah, I'm glad I didn't check it out, but if you're on the fence about Death Stranding, check out the new gameplay trailer, it might convince you to pick out the game. This is going to be a very big and important PlayStation 4 exclusive this holiday season for sure. Uh, Neo 2 got a gameplay release trailer. Uh, the game is coming out early 2020, so that's awesome. 
Neo was a very, very hard Dark Souls style game set in like a samurai ancient Japan type environment instead of like a medieval environment like the Dark Souls games. And it, it did very, very well, so that's why they're making this sequel. It's coming out next year. Gameplay looks awesome. There's a trailer out and everything, so fans are very excited about all of this news that came out from TGS. So if you're interested in checking out Neo 2, there is a new trailer for that as well. Uh, next, Call of Duty Modern Warfare has the beta out right now. And you can preload it on PlayStation 4. So if you pre-ordered Call of Duty Modern Warfare, you are able to download the beta for it right now on PS4. So not sure when the Xbox version is going to go up. I, I'm sure it's going to be very soon. But yeah, if you, if you pre-ordered Modern Warfare, you can play the beta or like download the beta, preload it on PS4 right now. So be sure to do that because the file size is very, very big. So you want to probably start downloading that really, really soon. And last piece of news is for Gang Beasts. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with Gang Beasts. It's a fairly popular game, got very popular once a lot of streamers started playing it. It's a fun multiplayer brawler fighting comedy type game. It's kind of difficult to describe, but apparently the PS4 and Xbox One are getting physical editions of this game, which are coming out on December 3rd. So on the 3rd of December, if you want to own a physical copy of Gang Beasts, you're going to be able to buy it in stores or online. So that's pretty cool. I mean, most people just downloaded the digital version from the PlayStation or Xbox Live store, but if you want to own a physical version because it's, you know, your favorite game or something, you can now buy a version when that comes out later this year, so that's awesome. Never expected that to actually happen. So, uh, yeah, that is all of the news for this week, all the big and important news. Let me know what your favorite piece of news was in the comments, what you thought of this week's news. I'm always interested in hearing everyone's thoughts, so... Thanks again for listening, for watching, and uh, yeah, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash ASMRgaming, and with as little as $1 a month, you can help support the channel and get shouted out in lots of uh, Patreon shoutout videos that I do. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time. So long.